Nick Brown at JTech today. Today we are going to be going to be doing a video on the installation of a input shaft in the eight four ten speed and the removal of an in, uh, of an input shaft on the eight four ten speed. So with that, guys, I'm going to get started. First thing first, on down here, you want to remove your clutch brake. All right, get a fifteen mil, fifteen millimeter to remove your bearing or your bearing cover. Always make sure on this bearing cover it has an oil outlet. It is going to be facing down with the oil hole right here, as you see on the cover on the front of the transmission metal. Next thing we're going to be removing is the little spacer right here. Now I got my snap ring pliers. best to use a flathead screwdriver and expand the snap ring and push back on it at the same time. It's a little bit loose. Now, what we want to do to come here, there's another snap ring on the outside of the bearing. This is the bearing here. All right. I want to be able to get to that snap ring. So, I want to tug on the input shaft just a little bit to where the snap ring is visible. At the same time, it's going to be pulling the bearing out, but not enough to where we can pull it all the way out. Okay. Now, my snap ring is visible. Or not my clutch puller, my uh, uh, input shaft puller ready. Alright, this is how it works. You got the base of the input shaft, you have the screw, um, you slide the puller on there, and you take these two housings right here. Basically, what you're going to be doing is just going to be setting the groove in these housings on the other side of that bearing where the snap ring was. And at the same time, it clamps around the, uh, or the input shaft uh, tube and clamps it down with an o-ring and then at the same time then you can turn it. I'll show you that in just a second. Also at the same time we want to make sure the screw is out far enough to where you can the base of the clutch puller is sitting on the bearing. clutch halves are their uh, bearing halves on there. All right, the puller's ready. Now I take my 13 16 wrench. Hold my uh, hold my input shaft puller at the same time as I turn the screw. And slowly, as I turn the screw, you'll see it pull the bearing out of the transmission housing. Alright, slowly but steadily. Alright, now my bearing is out. Now I can pull my 
puller out. There's my bearing. This is the front face of the bearing, and this is the um, seam that the uh, snap ring was sitting in. Okay. At this point now, we can just pretty much move our input shaft around. Now, uh, at this point, there's another snap ring inside here. If you look, I can actually take that out. Now on the inside of this input shaft, there's a gear where the where the input shaft slides in. Now on the inside of this gear, okay, there's a groove that the that the snap ring sits in. You want that snap ring? You want to put push the input shaft in far enough to where that snap ring will slide into that groove. All right. So basically, once you got one part of it in right there. You also want to just ride it or um, just drive it around the uh, into the groove. Alright, therefore we got the snap ring into the roof. Alright, after that, now we want to get the bearing. Take our bearing. We want to slide it onto the shaft. Best to take a flathead screwdriver, wedge it in between the drive gear and or um, and the sliding clutch, and take your input shaft uh, bearing install. All right. Now, at this point, the edge of the groove on the bearing is showing, and that's where we need to slide our uh, bearing snap ring right into. I'll just do this by hand. Just once you slide it into the groove, you just walk it around just like we did with the first snap ring. Alright, therefore, we got our snap ring in there. just did right there is I slammed the bearing into the housing along with the snap ring. Alright, I'm hitting the input shaft or the bearing in far enough to where this groove on the input shaft is showing to where I can slide my snap ring in there. Alright. Now at this point I have enough groove showing or if I don't know, don't necessarily know how much groove I need to have, I can also take the snap ring and I can slide it in there. All right, if the snap ring does not slide in there uh, at first time, um, then I know I need more slack, so I need to pull the input shaft back out. Okay. Just like that. So my snap ring now fits in there. Now, all right. I want to expand my snap ring.
All right, now I got my snap ring in there into the groove. Oh, I apologize. I want to check to make sure I don't have any excess play. Now this excess play that you're seeing here is actually in the bearing itself in between the rollers. All right, so at this point, I pretty much got my whole assembly back together. Now, I want to install my bearing cover housing. Just remember, just like I said at the beginning of the video, the old groove, which is right here on the uh, beginning of the housing, on the front of the housing, you want this direct in line with that. like turking the lugs on a truck or turking the lugs on any kind of car okay Alright, so with that guys, that was the installation of the procedure and the removal procedure of an input shaft, uh, or the input shaft on the Eaton Fuller 10 speed. So with that guys, I'll see you guys later.